Okay, here we are again. We're going to talk about GeoGebra and calculated essentially the weighted mean or the expected value of a probability distribution along with the standard deviation of a probability distribution and the variance of a probability distribution. So let's talk about it here. So I want to calculate these things. So I'm going to use a problem from our book. Here's a problem about the expected value. So calculating the expected value of a newborn baby's crying. So here is my probability distribution. I have my outcomes, my possible outcomes, my probabilities of each outcome, which is just this fraction here, not having anything to do with this. Well, this tells you what that is and what it means. Um, and then I have my x times p of x. I don't really need this information. This is the information if I was doing it by hand. So, and my book gives us what the expected value is and, right, the variance and the standard deviation by calculating it by hand. But sometimes it doesn't, we can't do it by hand. So let's use GeoGebra to show you how to use GeoGebra on this thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my data. I'm going to enter my data for my outcomes first, and then separately I'm going to enter my data for my probabilities for each outcome. So I'm going to come over to GeoGebra. I'm going to enter a set. So when I do sets, I like to name them personally. I'll call this one A. A, and then for sets, I use squiggly brackets. So the squiggly brackets, right, set up a set. So first thing I'm going to do is enter this 0 through 5. So, okay, so using GeoGebra, 0, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, I need a comma, 5, comma, 6. So there is my first set of all my outcomes. Oh, wait, why did I put 6 there? I don't really know. Okay, backing up, backing up. It's okay. GeoGebra can handle it. Backing up. There we go. Try again. I hit enter. So always try and remember to hit enter when you're doing dealing with GeoGebra. Now I'm going to go to the next set. So the next set I'm going to make is these probabilities. I could possibly use the fractions. Or maybe I could come over here and see the actual probabilities, the, the decimals that are listed for each probability. We could calculate them as well. So I like entering the decimals. It might make it just a little bit easier for me. So let's go there. So, so my next set is going to be B. B equals squiggly brackets. So my first probability is 2 out of 50, also known as 0 0.04. So 0 0.04, comma is for the zero case. The next case is 0.22. So 0 0.22, comma, 0 0.46, comma, 0 0.18, comma, 0 0.08, oops, 0 0.08, comma, and the last one, 0 0.02. And so now that I'm at my end of my data, let me just check it over one more time, seeing that all these are the same for 22, 46, 18, 8, and 22. For 22, 46, 18, 8, and 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so that's my data. Let me hit enter now to enter the data in there. So now I have my two sets. I have my two sets, my outcomes and my probabilities of those outcomes. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and calculate the mean. Or, uh, sorry, not the mean. Did I give it away? Whoops. Actually, the expected value is what we want. The expected value is just a weighted mean. So, and a weighted mean is easy enough to calculate by hand. Um, it really is. You just multiply the outcome times the probability like they're doing here by each of them. So outcome times the probability gets me this. Outcome times the probability gets me this and so forth and so on. And then when I add all those together, right, and use my calculator, I get this nice number for the expected value. So instead of doing that, let's use a formula, right, a formula we know. Let's use the mean. So this is a weighted mean formula. And if it's a weighted mean formula, we can look down in my nice GeoGebra that comes up. What happens on the computer, it comes up with stuff that's happening on your phone. It does not. So you just have to know the formula. 
this is the same formula for the regular mean as it is here. It's the same formula. GeoGebra just recognizes that if you have a comma here between two lists of numbers, it will recognize that this is the first of the list of numbers or the outcomes that we are trying to put in. This next list of frequencies, it says frequencies there, but you can use the relative frequencies just as easily, would be these fractions or the decimals that we were talking about and entering before, which we put up here. So all I have to do is refer back to these two sets that we have. So I need, um, when I'm doing this, when I'm doing a mean, I will need parentheses. So I'm just gonna type this in as if you were um, taking a test on your phone. So, right, so the mean is the mean of A comma B. My two lists up there is 2.1. Just checking, 2.1. Oh, look, it worked out. <laughs> so, and again, right, whenever you're using GeoGebra at the end of it, hit enter. Hit enter, right? Enter also on your phone, enter is this button. Okay, so I calculated the mean. Now I also want to calculate the standard deviation, um, the expected value and the standard deviation. So expected value is the mean, standard deviation is the standard deviation. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Probably because I'm tired. I'm recording this at 1240 in the morning. So, okay. So, here we go. I want to calculate the standard deviation. So, what do I do? Oh, I type in standard STDEV. So, I have choices here. Because this is a probability distribution, we are assuming it is a population that we are getting it from because we have all the information we need listed here in my probability distribution. Um, if you're not sure what I'm saying, just kind of recognize that whenever we're talking about probability distributions, we are talking about population data. All right, so where I'm gonna use the population data that I have, I'm gonna use my standard deviation P, S-T-D-E-V-P for this formula, always. So, and then I'm gonna use parentheses, right? And notice again, right, I have my list of numbers and my list of frequencies in this case. I'm using my relative frequencies, doesn't matter. All I have to do is hit parentheses and then type a comma B and booyah, 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 booyah. There is my same, right, standard deviation as what GeoGebra gave me. GeoGebra gave me quite a bit more than what the book actually gave me here. So um, the next one I wanted to calculate was the variance. So variance, there are two formulas for variance. I just want to do this one to make sure I'm talking about variance. Um, there is the variance. So if I type in V-A-R-I, right, it comes up with two sets of things, right? So again, this is the one I'm thinking of for my probability distribution. So, all right, I can type it in. I can just type in variance, knowing how to spell it. Variance, parentheses, A, comma, B and I get my variance that the book actually got too. So to point it out, right, this is a population variance. I don't really like the way GeoGebra has done this. Um, I'm not sure why they used, right, this notation for the population standard deviation versus the sample standard deviation. We just get rid of the P, um, but we're stuck with it. So here's a variance. This is population variance. Um, if I wanted sample variance, which I don't in this case ever, we literally type in sample variance and it comes up. All right, just wanted to show that to you. I'm not going to do that here because it's totally inappropriate. Um, <laughs> that sounded funny. All right, so wanted to give you that good example of using GeoGebra. Um, we will use this in class um, very soon. All right, see you then.